Okay, a bit of trivia. Who was the first president of the NFL? The first? Well, the NFL is in its 100th season this year, so that's a long time. I'm really not sure. You're going to have to tell me. It was, in fact, the Native American athlete Jim Thorpe. Wait, Jim Thorpe, the Olympic gold medal winner? That's right. And you know why he was the first president? Oh, no clue. Why? I think it was his love of the game. Well, even if he truly loved it, you're telling me that if you love the game enough, you can become president? Not just that, but if you love the game, play it, coach it, and have the respect and admiration of your fellow players, then it's not hard to imagine such a person becoming president. So wait, I'm still trying to wrap my head around how the Jim Thorpe that I know, a runner who won Olympic events like the high jump and hurdles, found himself on the football field in the first place. Well, he didn't get on the field that easily. The Carlisle Indian School, where Jim had made a name for himself as a track and field star, also had a football team. And the coach, Pop Warner, was dubious that even a skilled runner like Jim could hold his own in such a rough game, because in those days people assumed that only big, heavy guys were useful playing football. The game was mostly based on brute force slowly grinding the other side down the field. But Jim convinced the coach to let him try. Yeah, that sounds a bit risky for both of them, but also pretty bold. Yeah, well, Pop assumed that Jim would easily be tackled and give up on the idea. But instead, Jim literally ran circles around the team's defense and victoriously told the coach, nobody is going to tackle Jim. Oh, wow. So his speed and dexterity was more useful in football than the coach had probably thought? Yeah. It's easy to imagine that Pop Warner probably had a light bulb go off in his head seeing Jim so easily evade the lumbering defense. Yeah, I would think that the ability to run around the big guys was probably useful if your team was lacking in size and strength. It was. So much so that Pop Warner, out of necessity, invented some of the fundamental running and throwing plays that we see today in modern football. The single and double wing, the reverse, and and other trick plays. But most importantly, he was the first coach to really take advantage of the forward pass. Yeah, I'll bet that surprised some of the sports commentators of his day. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jim did amazing things on the field that thrilled the fans. And he went on to lead his Carlisle school team to some incredible victories over famous schools such as Harvard and West Point. Well, then what happened after his success playing for the Carlisle school? Did he get drafted in the first NFL rounds? Not quite. I mean, there wasn't much of a professional market for football outside the existing college associations in those days. What teams did exist were organically formed and loosely associated with each other. Okay, so more like just local clubs of people who liked to play. Pretty much. It just didn't have any formal structure governing those clubs yet, and the crowds were pretty small. But Jim famously told the other team owners that someday this game will draw like professional baseball, which you have to understand had huge attendance numbers at the time. Yeah, that's a pretty prophetic claim given what football has become in the USA. But what kind of turnout did they have starting out? Well, in 1915, Jim joined the Canton Bulldogs. No doubt his presence on the team elevated the attendance numbers. The Bulldogs had averaged 1,200 fans per game, but 8,000 showed up for Jim's debut. Well, so he was like the first celebrity football player then. That must have helped the game's popularity a bit. Oh, it definitely did. In 1920, Jim Thorpe and the other team leaders gathered in Canton, Ohio to formalize the professional organization now known as the NFL. They unanimously voted Jim as their first president, and believe it or not, he continued to play and coach his team while serving in that capacity. Can you imagine the president of the NFL today being out on the field, playing for a team he's also coaching? I mean, of course, things are different all these years later, but that does paint a picture of a man who truly loved the sport. No doubt. Jim could excel at many sports, as proven by his multi-event gold medals at the Olympics, his baseball career, and even basketball and boxing. But football was his favorite, and he kept playing until he retired at the age of 41, having played 52 NFL games for six teams from 1920 to 1928. So it should come as no surprise that someone as dedicated to football as Jim Thorpe would be the NFL's first president.